Stellar readers have been around since the 1950s, but they haven't always gotten the attention that they deserved. Because tokamaks were easier to design, for over 70 years they have been occupying the spotlight as the technology that will bring fusion to life. In recent years, however, there has been a resurgence of interest in this technology due to its unique capabilities and impressive stability under extreme conditions. Stellarators are now being touted as the future of fusion energy generation, with many experts predicting that they will soon become the master race of fusion technology. Let me just stop right here quickly. What a difference, eh? Wow. I mean, two ears apart. I usually don't ask this, but uh, I think I should get 100,000 likes for this. Come on. They look cool as fuck. Hello everyone, Subject Zero here. Conceptualized in the 1950s by Soviet physicist Igor Tum and Andrei Saharov and turned into reality in 1958 by Nathan Ivlinsky, the tokamak is a device that uses powerful magnetic fields to confine plasma. The magnetic system confines and controls the plasma, heating it to over 150 million degrees Celsius. They become energized to such degree that the atoms can now overcome their natural electromagnetic repulsion on collision and fuse, releasing huge amounts of energy. Well, it's a bit more complicated than that, but rather than bore you with another How Fusion Works video, let's just dive into the issues. Tokamak complexities can be broken down into two aspects, magnetic confinement and heat transfer. Today, we will focus only on the former, but if you want to know more about how energy is transferred throughout this machine, then please watch this video here. Tokamaks are far from perfect, and either is a good example to showcase that. The first major drawback is the superconducting wiring required for the machine to work. 100,000 kilometers of niobium tin titanium were used. Second, all magnets combined have a mass of over 10,000 tons. Everything around the machine needs to be engineered to sustain its mass. If any part of the machine sags as much as a millimeter, everything is thrown out of balance. Next is atom drifting. Essentially, there is a gradient in magnetic confinement where it is stronger at the center. Charged particles can get trapped in weaker orbits, making them drift away from the desired magnetic lines, losing considerable amounts of fuel. To overcome this problem, stronger electromagnets are required, where stronger really means bigger magnets. The result is an ever-increasing size of tokamaks, Either's core is 60 times larger than the average nuclear fission core. Lastly, unlike many have claimed, tokamaks aren't safe. Stability of superconducting magnets is still a huge problem. Quenching, which is sudden loss of superconductivity, occurs when the temperature required to maintain superconductivity deviates from its optimal point. When that happens, the quantum state suddenly disappears, releasing all its energy instantly. Well, scientists believe that most of these complications would eventually be solved through technological advancement, but despite decades of research, we've still not been able to generate a commercially viable fusion reaction on Earth, and for good reason. The process is incredibly difficult to control. One can only imagine if we would have fusion energy already, only if they continue to pursue stellarator technology. Stellarators aren't new. They were first idealized by Lyman Spitzer Jr. during the 1950s. His key insights were on how to control the problems presented by tokamaks. By introducing helical field coils with alternating directions throughout the length of the torus, this alone would create the desired twisted magnetical field, giving birth to the classical stellarator. However, during the 1960s, Tokamak prevailed due to its much simpler scheme, unlike its counterpart that was extremely costly and difficult to design, let alone produce its parts. Fast forward to the 1990s and 2000s, 
as computers became more powerful, with the aid of machine learning and computer-assisted design software, scientists gained the ability to understand plasma behavior in extreme electromagnetic fields, culminating into coil designs that literally shaped the plasma with extreme precision. This marked the first breakthrough for stellarators after decades of abandonment. But what really makes them stand out? Stability, power, mass, and cost. Because they use a unique arrangement of magnetic coils, it acts as a barrier to the movement of particles within the plasma, keeping it stable and contained, while also making it more resistant to external disruptions, like harmful magnetic fields or changes in temperature. While tokamaks rely on three separate electromagnetic systems, stellarators unite all of them. Mixing the toroidal and poloidal field magnets is what gives the stellarator coils its intrinsic look. The non-planar asymmetry of the coils is what produces the sole desired plasma rotation. Stellarators are devised in sections that mirror itself around the machine. Only a small number of coils are designed with specific shapes. In this example, six non-planar and two planar coils comprise the first subsection. Next, they are flipped and mirrored to make up the section which is then repeated all around the machine. Design, though more complex, provides immunity to the sudden and unexpected disruptions of plasma and the enormous, often destructive, magnetic field collapses that occur in tokamaks. As a result, stellarators require less energy to control and move the plasma, and they can operate at steady state continuously instead of pulses. Although coils are more intricate to design, complex to produce and challenging to handle, the payoff is literally shorter wiring and more power. Compared to either's 100,000 km of superconducting wires, stellarators require only hundreds. With recent advancements in superconductor technology, not only more power can be produced, but also lighter machines. When finalized, Eater's mass will reach incredible 23,000 tons. Just the magnets weigh around 10,000 tons, while its direct competitor, the Wanderstein 7X, has a mass of only 425 tons. That is, 23 times lighter. Lastly, project cost. If all Eater's budget was allocated to stellarators, we would be able to build more than 60 W7Xs. Eater is estimated to cost about 63 billion, while the W7X is only a little over $1 billion. Now, my dear viewer, it's your turn to comment on which technology, tokamak or stellarators, has more potential. To help you form your educated opinions, however, and to strengthen your aptitude in physics, engineering, and other scientific fields, I encourage you to visit Brilliant.org. Do you love learning? Whether you want to learn about AI, space travel, or the human body, Brilliant has a course for you. With over 60 courses and 20,000 plus practice problems, Brilliant believes that learning should be fun. So, they created courses that are written with inquiry curiosity, and openness to failure in mind. That way, you can learn at your own pace and have a blast doing it. You'll never get bored or feel like you're stuck in a rut. You'll always be challenged and engaged, so you can continue to grow and learn new things. Plus, brilliant courses are affordable and fit into any budget. Sign up for a free trial of Brilliant today, and the first 200 people to click on the link below get 20% off an annual premium subscription. Subject zero, we're done here. 